get asked a lot of questions when we travel about our rig. Can you stand up in there? Does the top pop up? How big is the bed? Can you cook in there? Is there a sink? And the number one question we get, is there a bathroom? Come on, let's take a look. We have a 2019 four-wheel camper Granby model in a Ford F-150. And that's another question we get all the time, especially from truck guys. An F-150? Why not a 250 or a 350 or a 450 or a Ram or a Chevy? Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, the F-150s are pretty available and economical. They get good fuel mileage on them. And the most important thing about this particular F-150 is it has the heavy-duty payload package that Ford offers. So it has a gross vehicle weight rating of 78.50, a payload of 25.70. It comes with a 5-liter V8 engine, skid plates, locking rear differential, and a 36-gallon fuel tank. The truck is basically stock. There's a few things we did. We upgraded the front grille to a Deegan 38 all-metal grille, and it came with a KC 30-inch LED light bar. The shocks we upgraded to Bill Stein 5100s, the tires are General Grabber ATX, they're 275-70R18, so they're a little bigger than stock, and the running board steps are APS. I'll put links in the description below where we got all this stuff. Let's take a look at the back. We did do a little bit of custom work inside the cab and at the back here. We have a friend, Dave, who is a very talented and skilled fabricator. I mean, he can make anything. And he made us a lot of cool, really cool stuff, including the entire bumper and steps, these gearboxes. The gearboxes are mounted on an arm that is held in with a pin and a latch, and you can open these, swing them all the way out. They both do it, and we can change these boxes out for anything we want, bigger boxes, smaller boxes, bike carrier, spare tire carrier, whatever we want. In the bumper, is a 25 gallon gray water tank. That's something the four wheel camper does not come with. But now that we have that, we're legal to camp on beaches because we're fully self-contained. We've got nifty backup lights, steps that fold up and fit into the two inch receiver, which I'm not gonna show you because the patent is still pending. We did some custom work back here. We did a complete seat delete and we made a whole new back. We've got these drawer systems here. They're all aluminum, so they're lightweight. Full extension drawers. In this drawer, we have rain gear, waders, hats, first aid kit. On the other side, we have all our fishing gear, the fly reels and flies, all that stuff. Underneath the drawers, we have slots that we made for our table. And for on this side, we have the telescoping ladder that we used to get up top. We have our chairs, our sand-free mat, water filter, and this case that hangs across the back houses the paddles for the canoes. Now you may have noticed those beautiful boats up there. They're both Hornbeck Classics. There's a 10-foot and a 12-foot in carbon. The 10-foot weighs 14 pounds, the 12-foot weighs 18 pounds, so they're super light. They sit up on top there. Also, we have solar panels up there. They're from Overland Solar. They weigh six pounds a piece and then we have a pair of action tracks and they weigh about 16 pounds. So we're very conscious of our weight because the payload includes all your gear, all your water, all your food and the passengers. We also have an ARB twin cylinder air compressor and a three gallon air tank underneath. We have an air chuck on the driver's side and on the passenger side and then makes it easy to air back up. Up here, we made a mount for our navigation the iPhone, the Garmin inReach, and our Osmo action camera. And some states don't allow you to have stuff on the dash, and if we go into a restaurant and we can't park the truck where we can see it, we made this so that the whole thing comes off and we can set it down, and then there's no temptation from the outside. All right, let's pop the top and then we can go inside. But first, I'll show you this. This is the water inlet fill. There's a 20 gallon tank inside and there's also a six gallon water heater. This is our shore power to hook up through AC and our outdoor shower, which we use all the time. Now you might
might have noticed that we put that up with the boats up there. We can do that because they're so light. All right, let's see what's going on in here. Welcome to the kitchen where we make gourmet meals every night. Well, almost every night. We opted for the glass top cook stove and the glass top sink when we ordered the camper. We don't hardly ever use that because we use a an induction cooktop, which I'll talk about later. One of the first things we made was a cutting board that fits over top, and that gives us a little bit more counter space. Then we made little holders for like the honey or the salt, pepper, and our favorite New England seasoning. And we made a stainless steel backsplash that is slightly magnetic, so they stick to it. Then we added the handlebar for the towels. We do have solar, which we'll talk about later. We have heat. This is the thermostat. This is the heater itself. We have the AC if you're plugged into shore power, which we never do. Uh, water and battery meat monitors there. A drawer for the kitchen utensils. And a cabinet for pots and pans and all that fun stuff. Down here is the battery compartment, which we'll talk about in a bit. And then there's some switches here for lights and stuff. It came with this mirror. Oh, how's my hair look? Not pretty good. We added the hooks because there were no coat hooks in here or hat hooks. So now we can hang up our coats and our hats. This is the fridge, but you'll have to come around this side. We opted for the largest fridge we could get. This is a thermo isotherm 130 liter fridge. It does have a small freezer in it. Not a huge freezer, but we can fit three weeks worth of food or more without too much trouble, which lets us stay off grid even longer. And now onto the bathroom. The most asked question, yes, there is a toilet. This is it. We ordered the camper with the cassette toilet option, and then we took it out before we even ever used it, and we replaced it with an airhead composting toilet, which we love. It works great, Good. and we don't have to deal with the black tank. All right, let's talk solar. That's a very important part about the way we travel. We like to be off grid and far away from all people. So there's no hookups where we go. We have 320 watts of solar panels on the roof. Uh, they're from Overland Solar. They're semi flexible. They weigh six pounds a piece, so they're not very heavy. Uh, the camper comes pre wired for solar, and we actually had Mainline Overland install the solar panels for us. But then later, we swapped out the battery it came with for a couple of Battleborn batteries. And they were excellent. Um, I had 200 amp hours and that was pretty good. But we have a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter that we use to power our induction cooktop. And that's how we cook most of the time. So we need a little bit more juice than 200 amp hours. And then I, I couldn't fit any more Battleborns in because there's just not enough room. But I found this red battery from Lithionics. It's 315 amp hours in one little battery with built-in Bluetooth even. So we upgraded to that. Still have the Battleborns. I use them for another project. But we cook on the induction cooktop and that way we don't have to use any propane. We save that for hot showers and for heat. We also have a Victron Orion DC to DC charge controller. So when we're driving the truck, the alternator charges our batteries. So when we pull into camp, we're almost always at 100%. Welcome to the dining room. We opted for the front dinette floor plan from Four Wheel Campers and it came with the dinette up here by the bed and because this is a Granby and an 8 foot uh, bed truck, these seats are really big. They make nice lounge seats so at the end of the day we sprawl out and it's super comfortable. But you can also see very comfortably four adults in here and with a stool you can add a fifth person. One thing we did add that made a huge change for us was this utensil drawer. In here is everything we need for dinner and breakfast and lunch. And it doesn't bounce out, it doesn't fall away, and I don't have to get up and go all the way back to the kitchen if I forgot a teaspoon for my coffee. And yes, it has a king size bed. This slides out, these cushions pop in, and it makes a massive sleeping platform. Also, we have an exhaust fan in the bedroom, and we have one in the kitchen, too. They're fantastic fans. They came from the factory, and they are bi-directional, in or out. I did add a speed control to the one 
in the kitchen because even on low it was a little bit too fast so now I can dial it down nice and quiet so why did we choose a four-wheel camper well we have a four-wheel drive truck so it sort of made sense we like to paddle over very remote lakes and fish in high mountain ponds and the camper lets us get close to the trailhead and sleep near the trailhead and we don't have to drive all the way back home or all the way back to a cabin somewhere and we can stay out for a very long time because of the food and the solar. What's your favorite part of the camper? My favorite part is that we can get to areas that are hard hard to reach. We have that ability, but also we bring the comforts of home, a place to cook, a place to sleep, away from the bugs. It couldn't be better. Oh yeah. Well, the windows all have screens, so it is pretty bug proof. <laughs> and it is very, very comfortable. A lot of people put a foam topper on the bed, but we found it was perfectly comfortable the way it is. So between the Hornbeck boats and the four-wheel camper, the opportunities for adventure are absolutely endless. We've had our four-wheel camper now for over three years, and she's taken us to some really amazing places, whether it's an old forest service road, a logging road, sometimes a small town, and sometimes just in the middle of nowhere. We've always had great adventures. Thanks for watching. Until next time.